all over the world. There's a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. All over the world, the Spirit is moving. All over the world, as the prophet said it would be. All over the world, there's a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. All over the world, the Spirit is moving. All over the world, as the prophet said it would be.
the Lord. I, I always love to be in the house of the Lord and just enjoy His presence. Enjoy the presence of His wonderful family, my yeah. family here. Yeah. 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 A lot of people out of town. Sarah Kate is all yeah. the way back from the University of Georgia. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she went on the road a few weeks ago and went there uh, with honors to the University of Georgia. I might miss out some of her accolades because she's got a lot of accolades. Oh, boy. And uh, I might miss some of them. So I'm not going to say too much of them. All your accomplishments that you've accomplished well. Yeah, she has. And the yeah. greatest accomplishment for me is the love that you have for the Lord. Yeah, and how he has his heart upon you. And how he'll continue to have yeah. his heart upon you, Sarah. Okay. Yeah. The lovely girl Amen. of the family. So grateful for, for uh, Norman and Matt on the drums. And of course, we can't forget the Martin brothers. Hallelujah. John is out of town and uh, his uh, men did a fantastic job. Fantastic job, and uh, we're going to have a wonderful day in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. A couple of things I'd like us to pray for while we're in the service, because I don't want to forget. Uh, Friday night, uh, Jimmy's lost one of his nieces in a car wreck Aww. up in Washington, and it's hit him real hard, so I would like for you to pray for Jimmy. Amen? Praise the Lord. I always want us to have in our thoughts and our minds our country. The United States of America, I come from the UK, but I've been here longer now than I have in the, in the United Kingdom. Uh, and I want to pray for our leaders on both sides yeah. of the pond. Yes. And that uh, they will, the decisions that they make, we've got an upcoming uh, election. And elections are very important. Yeah. I always remember my mother, she was vocal and such. She, that's why I love Pat so much. Because my mother was always straightforward and, she would shoot you from the hip and sometimes not realize what she was saying. But uh, when we had, used to have elections when I was young, I, didn't, I couldn't vote because I was in the military <coughs> at that time then. And uh, if someone would say something complaining about the labor government or the conservative government or complaining about this and that, my mother, I, I remember to this day, she'd say, well, did you vote? That's wrong. No, well, keep your mouth shut. It's up to you. You have a voice. You have a voice. And I encourage you to vote your conscience. We need to have God's man or woman in that White House. I pray that God's person be there. Hallelujah. Vote your conscience. Vote the Bible. Hallelujah. It's very, very important not to sit back. Your vote counts. Your voice counts. Can I hear an amen? amen. Praise the Lord. So remember that. And also... Uh, I want you to welcome the one sitting next to you. Yes, Steve, you can speak to Donna this morning. And welcome her into church this morning. She wasn't with you last week and we missed her. And I know you missed her too. You sat for a while and never spoke. And, but she's here with us today, Steve. <laughs> What's that? Yes, you both had a vacation. I don't know that, man. Praise God. Isn't God good? And Aunt Mary's here with us. Yes, Mary. You thought I would forget you, but no, you're here. And I just pray that each and every one of us yes. rece receive something from the Lord. Come with an open heart. Come with your spirits open. In John 12, 32, it says, If I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. That's what we've been doing this morning is Ben has led us this morning in the praise and worship to be able to lift him up, lift Jesus higher. Yeah, Hallelujah. Lift Jesus higher. He's our only hope. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's our only hope. And he's the only one that can make a difference in our lives in every area. Whatever we are looking for or searching for, Jesus can make the difference yes. in our lives and heart. Praise the Lord. We're going to be hearing about Operation Christmas Child next week from Kim and, and Michelle. They're getting everything together. Remember the sheets at the back. 
Remember to try and bring in your gifts throughout the year, the little things. <coughs> Maggie and them or Bonnie and them see something on sale, they'll buy it and keep it and bring it in and we'll, ha we'll all have it ready for that time round about uh, November when we have our packing party. So we're going to be speaking more about that next week. Amen? Praise the Lord. What does John 12, 32 say? If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto you. That's us, up to us to lift them up, lift Jesus higher in our hearts and our lives this morning. Praise the Lord. We've got a young lady that's very special to me that's here today, and she's, uh, she's 18. And uh, I don't know if she wants our granddad to sing to her or not, but he's going to. So come on, Elizabeth. Any other birthdays here this morning? Praise the Lord. This is my eldest granddaughter. She takes her looks and her poise from her granddad. She's grown up to be a lovely little girl, a young lady. And she's been brought up in the house of the Lord. And I pray more than anything else in her outer beauty. Yes, that's nice. It's lovely. But for me, it's the inward beauty that can only come from the Lord. It makes us shine, makes our lives shine. Amen? Praise the Lord. No more birthdays. Sarah Kate, thanks for coming all the way down from the college to celebrate this wonderful day with your friend. You've been friends for 16 years? 18 years. 18 years. 18 years. You sure? Since I was born. You've never had an argument or not? No. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What, our birthday? Come on, Gail. Can you help her up here, Bill and Miss Joy? Just to hear. She just have to come to here. <coughs> come on down here, darling. These are two beautiful girls. And I've known Gail almost for as long as I've known Elizabeth. Even longer. Turn the pace that way, Gail. A lot longer. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Here she is. Aunt Gail and, and Elizabeth, and I'm coming to the middle. Coming in the middle. That's it. <laughs> you know, sometimes when the, you have a birthday, you receive gifts and presents and everything. You're not getting anything. <laughs> but we're going to pray for you today. That's nice. <laughs> we're going to ask God's blessing upon you. And that's the greatest gift that we could ever ask for Sister Gail and for Elizabeth this morning. So as we all sing with gusto this morning, yeah. amen, that means all your heart, put your heart into it today. As we sing happy birthday to this beautiful two, beautiful two young ladies. Thank you. Oh, you're, you're welcome, you're welcome. Christmas. Praise the Lord. Here we go. Happy birthday. Now, <laughs> I can't tell you how old Gail is, <clears throat> but she's getting on up there now. Hallelujah. I can't even count it, my fingers and my toes. Thank you, Ben. Praise God. This morning, you know that every one of you means so much to me, and you, you all count, and you've all come from different walks of life into the church here. And you've imparted your love and your life and your ministry, different ministries, into the church. We have a couple here today that's leaving us uh, next week to go on a huge, huge mission trip. And uh, since they came along outside us, they've been involved in our prayer ministry and our missions mission ministry. And Aunt Martha, she does a beautiful job of the flowers down below. I don't know who's going to look after it while you're away. Okay, you got it organized? Well done, Aunt Martha. I knew I could depend upon you. Well done. I'm so proud. And uh, I know it'll be beautiful as you go, but they're going for an extended trip. Come on, David and Aunt Martha, Uncle David. Give them a big hand as they come. <laughs> Hallelujah. They've been involved in ministry for years, and God has given them a heart for others. 
and a longing to draw souls unto him. That scripture this morning, if I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw men unto me. They promote that scripture. They promote that ministry, drawing all men and women and the ministry that they have unto him. And I, I give him honor this morning and I thank him for their faithfulness, Amen. their kindness and love. And they're going to say a little bit here. So give them a big hand as they come. <coughs> Sorry, I'm going, to, I'm going to turn my hearing aids up a little bit. Give them a big hand as they come. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, wow. I, <coughs> seven, eight months ago when we began thinking about this trip, it was just a small seed, um, but it's grown, and um, I have had so many positive responses from people that we are going to go visit. But one of the main parts of our trip is going and visiting um, our school in Uganda, Kabali School, and the family of Pastor Charles Cunha. Um, can we play that uh, little video? You want to turn the lights down, I think. Do you have the uh, audio? incorporate that a little bit more here, I think. Standing in the light of God. Praise God. Thank you. So you say a little something from your heart for these beautiful people. <laughs> Usually I have it printed out what I'm going to say, so I'm not prepared. Yes, you are. So um, I just love y'all. Y'all. I picked that up now, y'all. 
Anyway, thank you for praying for us. Thank you for supporting us. And um, we'll do our best to represent Jesus the best way we can. Also, at the back table there, Kabali School table, there's um, a bookmark that we created for those who are going, we're going to meet and be a, a part of. And it's, as I was talking with Johnny this morning in, in the break room, um, you know, there's finding the place of who we are and who they are. Because we're all part of the family. Yes, and. <clears throat> We, we don't want to take American religion to them. I think what I want to be able to experience is their life in Christ and how that moves into me. Yes. Because we are part of each other. So if you're interested and you pick up one of these bookmarks back there and pray for us as for a while we're gone. We'll be gone for seven weeks. Oh, wow. Um, be back uh, November the 4th. In time to vote. In time to vote. So, um, I would, we would love your prayers, and Martha and I would like to stand down here while you yes. pray for us. I can get the rest. We're starting in Hawaii, and then oh. we're going to Fiji, oh, New Zealand, Australia, the Philippines. India, Uganda, Malawi, Kenya, and Greece. Good. And then home. We're yeah. missing on uh, God's own country, Scotland. Yeah. But we have to start there, Martha, please. I'm going to ask all your brothers and sisters and folks out here, we're going to stand together. Are you coming down? Yes, I'm coming behind you. I'm just behind you here, because of Michael Fez, if I don't. Because you're short. I'm short. You didn't have to say that, Martha. <laughs> I wish you'd just kept the script. Tall, tall, tall is, it's not scared. written out. Thank you, Jesus. It's not written out. I don't know what to do. <clears throat> Father, we're grateful for each other as we're gathered together in your midst this morning, realizing that you're here with us. Two or three are gathered. You're right here in the midst. And I pray for this wonderful couple who have given their hearts and their lives and their desires to minister to others, to minister to those that are less fortunate than all of us. I'm thankful, Lord, that we could come alongside them and be part of this ministry. Although we can't go to all these different countries, we can stand by them and support them, love them, and pray for them, just as we do for Samaritan's person, all the bigger ministries and all they do. We can't do these things, but we can be part of it. We can come alongside and be supportive and, and just pray, Lord Jesus, because prayer does make a difference. We pray for safety. We pray for favor. We pray for health and strength and soundness of mind that they'll find favor as they travel to each country as they go to them, and that, Lord, your hand will be upon them every step of the way. We love them, Jesus, and we just send forth the love of family life church along with them and bring a little part of us with them and when they come back Lord we'll hear of all the many many blessings and things that they've seen with their eyes although we're not there with them we can be part of it from right here as we pray for one another in Jesus we ask your blessing upon him in every area of their lives in Jesus name and we all said Amen, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord Hallelujah bless you both <coughs> Hallelujah. That good, Ben? Great. What do you think, Ben? Great. What's it like to have your daughter back? Excited. You're excited? What was it like to let her go? Yeah. yeah was it tough, Ben? Praise the Lord. Yes, Hallelujah. We love our families, don't we? Amen. Praise God. And as I was saying in that prayer, you know, it's wonderful. We can't go on different things. I remember when we were in Norcross, they <coughs> sent me over to Haiti to make sure that the missionary didn't have a condo on the beach and was lying there and smoking dope while we were sending the money over. And uh, the wonderful thing about uh, David and Martha being to Kabali, they've been there 
the scene of the ministry. As you know, the pastor has just passed and uh, left a big hole in that ministry there. Because we're all important. Can I hear an amen? amen? Praise the Lord. We're all important to God and we all have a part to play. You're all special. Every single one of you. Every single one of you that I'm looking at this morning, you're special to God. And you have a place in the ministry that you can carry out. Don't think any different. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23. We're going to celebrate communion this morning. Every church doesn't do it every week. But we have the privilege of being able to come before the Lord's table that's set before us. As you'll see in the graphic in front of us, where we held the communion cups and the table that's carved out of the wood. It says, in remembrance of me, in remembrance of the Lord, for the sacrifice that he made for you and I. It says, for God so loved the world, that's you and I, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And if you would desire to, to live in eternity with Jesus and you've accepted him into your heart and life as a little children as they used to pray together, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart, come into day, come into stay. Come into, into my heart, Lord Jesus. As I said that, that prayer, or similar prayer, when I was 19 years old, and I accepted him into my heart and my life, my life was totally changed. I didn't have a pastor. I didn't have a Christian friend. I didn't have a Bible. When back into active service in Northern Ireland, where there was bombings, shootings, riots, sniper fire, all types of things. Guys that I would cuss with, go out with women with, go out to the bars and drink and do all those things with. But you know, there was a change in here. Something was different. I didn't have anyone to tell me what was right or what was wrong. His sport, Holy Spirit spoke to me. And I realized the things that I had to change. And my born again, there was a really been a change in me. And that really happened. I could. I could sing that song with authority. Born again, there's really been a change in me. Born again, just like Jesus said. Born again, all because of Calvary. Oh, I'm glad, so glad that I've been born again. The greatest decision I ever made in my life was the day that I bent the knee and accepted Christ into my heart and life. And if you've never done it, you can do it today. And your life will be changed. Your life will be transformed. The things you used to do, you'll do them no more because you don't, not because you've been told to, it's because you don't have the desire. I don't have the desire to drink anymore. I don't have the desire to smoke anymore. I don't have the desire to cuss and do the things I used to do when I was, you know, I don't have that desire. That desire has been taken from me. It hasn't, I haven't been whipped into submission. The desire's gone. Jesus. He made the difference in my heart and in my life. And I'll let me tell you, if he can do it for me, he can do it for anyone. He took me from the gutter to where I am today. I'd be ashamed to tell you all the different things I did when I was younger. But I am not ashamed to tell you of the difference that Jesus Christ has made in my heart and in my life. And because of that, I can celebrate this morning along with you all to celebrate this table. This is not a table just spread for me. This is a table that's spread for all of us. Inside these little cups is little pieces of bread that's symbolic of his body that was broken for you and for me. And inside the cup, there's a little cup of juice, red juice, and it's symbolic of his blood that was shed for you and me. Well, why would he do such a thing? Why would he allow his body to be beaten, beaten and bruised like he did? Do you know why? Do you know why? Because he loved you and he loved me. He loved you enough. He didn't do it just for me. 
he did it for us all. So as we celebrate together as a family this morning, Family Life Church, as individuals, as we bring our thoughts and our prayers before the Lord today, we celebrate this table in remembrance of him, in remembrance of that sacrifice that he made. If you think about it, all that has happened to him, the sacrifice that he made, because he loved you and he loved me. So I'm thankful today that I can celebrate along with you as I partake of this piece of bread that was symbolic of his body that was broken and beaten for me. I give him thanks for that. And after the same manner as I take the cup and I drink from the cup and I celebrate his blood that was shed for, for me. All because he loved me. There's something about love, isn't there? Hallelujah. I want to just tell him this morning, Lord, we love you this morning. As you hear our still voices, we love you and we care for you. And we appreciate so much that sacrifice that you made for each and every one of us. Pray your blessing to be upon everyone that partakes this morning. And as we realize afresh why you did it, because you loved us, because you cared for us. And we now can have eternal life with you as we've accepted you this morning. Pray God's blessing upon you richly, each and every one, as you partake this morning from the cup. In Jesus' name, amen.
Chico. Grace and peace to you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So uh, we're picking up in our series where we left off last time. I kind of touched a little bit on uh, Noah, but I wanted to dive into the, some of the details of it because it's so good. Um, and uh, for those of you uh, who might have a similar uh, upbringing as I did, or, and if those of you who didn't, that's fine as well. But I remember these different stories growing up in Sunday school of like, you know, Moses in the Red Sea or uh, uh, Samson or uh, David and Goliath. And Noah's Ark for me was up there because I remember I had this uh, uh, storybook Bible when I was a kid that had these paintings. And I remember it just really hit me as a little kid, the thought and the idea of everything covered by water like that. It really drew me. And, and so I was paying more attention to the, 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 the fantastic images in my mind that were my imagination went with the whole world covered with water and just this boat with eight people and, and animals. And that's where my mind went. And, and I think that's fine. That's more than fine. But I, I, I missed so much of the deep messages that God was communicating to all of us through that story. Um, and so I'm going to kick right into it. And right before, just a quick word about right before we get into um, the story of uh, Noah, um, you might have noticed, um, and maybe you've done this before, where you have like a Bible reading plan and you've thought to yourself, okay, this is the year. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the Bible from, from Genesis to Revelation. I'm going to, I'm going to start at it right now. And you're, you're at a good clip. You know, you, you read about creation, you're like, okay, I'm doing good. And you get into Adam and Eve and like, ooh, some drama. Okay, I, I'm in it. I'm listening. I'm paying attention. And, you know, Cain and Abel, it's like, oh, this is just, you know, a, a story that I can really read and really pick up on. And then you hit the genealogies and you're like, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh. And, and it may be, surely y'all haven't done this, but I'll confess. I'll, sometimes I'll get to the genealogies and I'll yeah, you know, and go to and go to the next exciting part, right? Y'all don't do that. Y'all, y'all, y'all are better than me. Y'all don't do that. Um, but uh, a, a quick word about genealogies. Did y'all know that they were put in there for a, a reason? You know, God doesn't just say stuff just to say stuff. He, when God speaks, you know, it's for a reason and for it's for a purpose. Um, and so these genealogies are put in there. Uh, and this is the answer of why God put him in, in there. The reason why we hit after Cain and Abel and we hear about, you know, and then there was Seth and then there was this guy and then there was Enosh and this, there was Mahalel and all this stuff. And, they, and there was this thing that, that in the Bible it records that they were born. This is the kids they had and then they died. And it gets kind of repetitive and they died and they died and they died and they died. And, they died, and, they died, and it's like, oh, all right, we're, we're on this death train that came into our world. And, but the reason why they're there and why the genealogies are in the Bible are important is because genealogies preach the gospel. Because anytime you see a genealogy in the Bible, did you notice they weren't everybody's genealogy? It was a specific genealogy. So every time you read a genealogy in the Bible, think this genealogy is here because of Jesus Christ. And it is to help prove that God kept his promise given in the promise of the chosen seed. And through this line, this chosen seed that would crush the serpent's head would surely come. And so I think that's, I want to point that out as well because we get to, and we'll see a little bit later as we get into the flood, how God keeps his promise. Um, we, we, we see in Genesis Chapter, let's see, I believe it's chapter 8, excuse me, chapter 7. I'm going to read this right quick. Excuse me, chapter 6. Chapter 6, verse 5 through 10. So we read all about these genealogies, and we get to where God says, The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him to his heart. That's, that's, that's hardcore right there to think that it grieved God that he made man. 
It, it went right here in this particular part. That's stunning. Um, and the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him into his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Then we read about how these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God, and Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So we get to this point, and that was something that always struck me as odd when I was a kid, as I would read this part, and I would think, that's a little too harsh. Like, wow, really? You were, you were that mad? God? I mean, how evil are we talking? You know, I mean, is it just a, you know, big evil or is it just little evil? And, you know, is there degrees? And, you know, how much is so bad that you want to just destroy everything? And let's stop and remember that who God is. God is holy. The Bible says God is holy, holy, holy. Three holies. He doesn't get just one holy. He gets holy, holy, holy. A three-time holy God. And then if you recall, when Lucifer rebelled and he convinced all these uh, angels to go with him, it was one act of rebellion. One. And that was enough for them to be kicked out of heaven forever. And so let this speak to you of just how intentional God is with his love with you and with me. Is that mankind is the only thing in creation that has told God no and God still had a plan to redeem that, to fix that, to correct that. Not for God to sit back and cross his arms and wait for man to get it right. No, God knew right away it's going to take him to do something. He is going to have to do something. Man's going to have to die. But we have a God who also can make a dead man live again. So yes, it's true. We do need to die. We all die. And we need this. This part of us that is sin needs to die. But we have a God who promises that because of Christ and because of who he is and what he has done, we will live again. This is a rescue plan. This whole book is about God's rescue plan. So we get to Noah, and Noah, it wasn't that God was scanning throughout the world and looking for one righteous person and bing, bing, okay, found one, Noah. No, no, it says God found favor with Noah. See, that's something different too. When God looks on someone with favor, it's not because that person is great. It is because God is great. It's because he's great, because he finds favor in you, not because you are amazing, but because God is amazing. Hear me. I, there's nothing in me that would make God go, ooh, we need him on our team. No, it is, that is not how it works. I was dead in my trespasses and sins, and God sent someone in my life to tell me the good news that Christ was crucified on the cross for the forgiveness of my sins, and three days later rose from the dead. Believe that, and you will be saved, and the Holy Spirit gave me faith in Jesus Christ to believe that was true, so I didn't even save myself. The Holy Spirit told me it was true, told a dead man to live because of Jesus Christ, and that is how you you too will live because of faith in him that is given to you. It's, it's so amazing what God does. God says, only faith can please me. Here, have some faith. That's amazing. That is wonderful. So we see this story ramp up. And we see in verse, I read about verses 5 through 7, how evil man was. And not to mention the fact, but that, the Bible says that we are born sinners, born in our iniquity. From day one, the moment of birth, we need to be saved. We are so far cut off from Christ that we will not want God. But God sent a preacher, like I said, to me with the goods of the gospel, and he has sent a preacher to you. God did all the work of saving me, and he has done all the work in saving you. 
It is good news that I cannot save myself. It is good news that you cannot save yourself. Because it is a very scary thing to think that God would sit back and go, show me. Prove it. Do it. Can you imagine the heart if we were just left on our own to just think, maybe we did it right. Maybe we believed right. Maybe we promised right. Maybe we committed right. Maybe, maybe, maybe. No assurance whatsoever. But God has done a wonderful thing for us that he doesn't leave us on our own understanding. He doesn't leave us on our own to figure things out. He actually uses stuff to save us with. Like this whole Noah's art thing, when the the rains came and all of the waters filled the earth all the way up, and God told Noah to build this ark and to prepare, and God brought all the animals in, and they got everybody in. So everybody in the world, under the water, dead, only eight people. And God didn't snap his finger and keep them hovering in the air. He didn't just, you know, remove them from the flood out of this earth and put them like in a staging area until it was all done. No, they were still here. But God's plan was to use something, an actual something, an actual something that was made out of wood to put these people into the thing that would save them from the waters of this flood. Hear me now, just as when Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteousness for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, which made alive in the spirit, in which we went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey. When God's patience waited in the days of Noah... While the ark was being prepared in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. So just as those people were placed into something, they were placed into this ark to save them from the flood of the, of the flood that came. All who were put into the ark lived. God put them there. My friends, all who God places into Christ will live. All who were placed into Christ will live. And that is how the flood and how the ark correspond to baptism because those who were placed into the ark live and those who were placed into Christ live. And there's other verses that we can get to later of how it speaks to how baptism is where God puts you into Christ. He buries you with Christ. He raises you with Christ. And this is another thing that's tangible. What it says here, it's for a good conscience. So what does that mean? It means I'm not left on my own to ask, did I do it right? I've been given something in baptism that says I'm a baptized child of God. That happened to me. That's just one of the ways of where God uses to point us that we are in him. In the Lord's Supper, he gives us bread, wine to us, for us, for the forgiveness of sins. And you've heard me say before, how can bodily eating and drinking do such great things? And it's not the bodily and eating and then drinking that does such great things, but it's the words It's the words because God connects his words just as he did to baptism, just as he does to the Lord's Supper. He connects his certain words to them that says, if you believe this for the forgiveness of sins, you have this. You have what God says. And God, how he saved us through the cross. This points to. Noah and the flood as well. Many scholars tried to or show how they, they make this comparison between the side of the ark as being the side of Christ. Where people go into the ark through the side door. And we have Christ when he's on the cross, when his side was pierced, blood and water flowed from it. The things that save us. Christ himself, his blood. 
This happened. This happened. Noah and his flood happened. Just as much as Jesus dying on the cross for our sins happened. And God gives us something tangible to be concrete that we can hold on to so that we're not left to just have faith in ourselves or faith in our faith, but faith in Christ and what he has done. Jesus Christ was an actual man who had fingers, who had eyes, who had hair. He was an actual man who lived an actual life on this planet 2,000 years ago. He walked with us. He is one of us. He came for us. And he actually died on an actual cross made of wood. He died. And three days later, he actually rose from the dead. And he did all of this for you. This isn't just some good thinking. This isn't just some wishful thinking. This isn't... This isn't other religions that come with great ideas and philosophies. We are saved by actual events that God orchestrated for us. And that is amazing. That is amazing to me. And this whole time that Noah and his family are in this ark, I kind of briefly mentioned this last week, all they had was the promise that God was going to see them through. In spite of nothing but water, nothing but death, Nothing but darkness, nothing but rain. Nothing was giving them any kind of, any hint that they were going to be okay other than that they were in the ark and that God promised that they would come through it. And just like, in, just in the same way how they had a promise to hold on to, we too have a promise. A promise from God that what Jesus did was enough. Was enough. That it was sufficient. That it was full. That it was final. I've seen many, and I have too in the past, as the team comes forward, I've struggled with the thought of, yeah, but did it work? See, the devil will come in and he'll, he'll lie. He'll say, are you sure God really said that this would be how you were saved? Are you really sure that, you know? The same God that made the promises to Noah and his family and as we keep continuing through this Bible, the same promises that God has made to all these different people. And where God time after time after time again came through on his promises is the same God who promised us through Christ, through his cross, through his resurrection, that we will have the forgiveness of sins through that. Maybe you're here this morning and maybe you're struggling or you're thinking like I have before. Am, did I do the right things? Did I do all the things right to make sure that God saved me, loved me? Maybe before you felt on your own when it comes to thinking this or and the doubts come. The way out of that for me has been to stop looking at me. To stop looking at me. To stop considering me. To stop thinking how I did all the things right. How I did all of, tried to make this happen. When I stopped looking at me and looked at Christ and what he has done, who he is, what he promised, his words, his actions, what he's done for me. That is where my assurance comes from in what Christ has done, not in what Zach Cole has done. 
So if you're here this morning and maybe you are struggling with when it comes to faith or when it comes to your relationship with God, consider Christ and his shed blood for you. Consider that and what he has done. I just want to pray right quick, right quick. Dear Heavenly Father, I, I thank you for sending your son. I thank you for comforting us with the good news that you have given to us in your son. Lord, it seems like there's so many that around this world or even in our country that they're I know they're looking for so many things to turn to, to give them hope, to give them peace, to give them fulfillment, to give them all the things that they're looking for in this world rather than you. Lord, I ask that you use this time in our world where so many know that something's just not right. Use this time to help advance your gospel, Lord this good news of what Jesus Christ has done for all of us. And I pray right, Lord, right now, Lord, that for all of us in this room, that they leave here today knowing that they are forgiven, that they are redeemed, and that they are reconciled to you, God, because of Jesus. Feel free to say this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner. I've sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. And for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Forgive me, renew me, and lead me so that I may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Amen. I have good news for you. Amen. That by the order of and in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of God, that you have the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. You are forgiven. For Christ's sake, this is most certainly true. And fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Zach. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A good, timely word. In the years that we've been serving the Lord and came to this great country, came to Norcross, Georgia, I'm thankful that the Lord sent us here and some place over in Africa. We'll send David over to Africa. And I'm glad he sent us here. But along the way, we've, we've met some beautiful people. Lovely, lovely people who loved him and served him. And one has come to my notice this morning is in the hospital today. She moved to South Georgia. Her name is Jane Bumboy. And uh, she met my father-in-law over 40 years ago. And believe it or not, her husband, uh, uh, Dave, uh, Dave Bumboy and her, they were bikers way back then. You wouldn't believe she was a biker now, but uh, she's in the hospital. And I would just like for us as we close in prayer to pray for her. Jim Boy, a, a, boy, a lovely woman that loves the Lord and like so many of the others that we know here, give their lives for the service of others because they love Jesus and it's Jesus that puts that in their heart. Remember to pray for Aunt Martha and Uncle David as they go on their trip. Pick up a marker to put in your Bible and uh, let's pray for them on this wonderful trip that they're going on. Remember our operation Christmas child, next week, bring along your, pick up a flyer and bring along your gifts and uh, for the children. And as you realize the difference that you can make one person. I love Jesus this morning, do you? I say I love Jesus this morning, do you? Well, let's lift them up as we go and leave in prayer in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. I love you, Lord. Love you all that you're doing. Pray for Jane this morning in that hospital bed, whatever she's need of. Show her favor with the doctors and the nurses and, and raise her up 100% whole. 
Thank you for all the young people that are here today. Thank you for Sarah Kate and, and bless her as she's off there in college. And I, I just appreciate you being with us this morning in Jesus' name. And we all said,